Hey everybody, welcome to a video I bet you never thought you'd ever see because today we are getting our hands dirty or at least grimy as we attempt to pull the engine on my 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle. This is such an exciting day. It's always been a dream of mine to pull an engine on a car and myself and my dad and our buddy James, we're gonna attempt this engine pull. In order to tackle this video, there's my dad, he's, he's installing the heater. That's the most important install today. Uh, in order to start this video, um, we actually are gonna consult a couple of sources, obviously YouTube, but this book is really cool. This is the How to Keep Your Volkswagen Alive, a manual of step-by-step -step procedures for the complete idiot. This is actually the best self-published book outside of the Bible. It was written in the 60s. They've sold hundreds of thousands, if not millions of copies of these, but it's like an idiot's guide for everything you need to know about Volkswagen life, so we're gonna consult this book as well. The first step was to remove the rear seat cushion and disconnect the battery. So we're just gonna pull this negative terminal off this battery. I gotta say, um, there's a little bit of rust. Yeah, you don't have to focus on that. Specifically like, like, like right there, and right there, <laughs> and uh, yeah, right there. It's not so bad. <laughs> the cardboard stock. The cardboard, the cardboard is to put over the battery terminals because if someone of exceptional girth gets in the passenger side of your seat, they can actually short out the battery on the seat cushion and then you start a fire. So we're gonna turn to page 241 here. Um, step one, prop the lid open so it doesn't fall on your face. That sort of prop. Step two, drain the oil. Yep, yeah, done that. Step three, electrical disconnection. Um, first, the oil sensor underneath the distributor, the plastic thing with the six-sided nut that activates the oil lights on the dash. I love this because I use words like plastic thing. Remove the wire attached to it and mark it J4. Each wire was disconnected one at a time and labeled with painter's tape. And there's only like a 99% chance I got it completely wrong and we're gonna be screwed when we go to put the engine back in. Unbeknownst to most people, I'll tell you what those do, right? Uh, this one is a heated steering wheel and this one <laughs> are the heated seats. Volkswagen was really ahead of its time, yeah, back in the day. And then if this were the, uh, you know, the super duper Beetle, we'd have massaging seats but it's not, it's just a super beetle. The next step involved removing this piece of tinware in the back, which helps guide air around the engine. Hey, there we go, nice work. The fuel line was then crimped, removed, and shifted out of the way, so it would be out of the way when we pulled the engine. Dry, look at that. Okay. Great work, folks. Okay, so the fuel line is disconnected, and we move the hard line out of the way of the spark plug leads here. So, let's see what's next. I think we need to start going underneath, James, huh? This video wouldn't be possible without our friends over at RMPS Automotive Equipment. They are the folks that installed our new Challenger Lifts for post lift. This is gonna be such a great thing to have, um, not only on videos, we can take a look underneath cars, but also for wrenching and stuff like this Volkswagen. <music> Say, James, every car guy's dream is to have a lift. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is living the dream. Because you know, if you spend your whole life working underneath it on a like a you know roller, yeah. this you know makes life so much nicer. Beautiful. So let's see what the underside of my bug looks like. So it's actually not as bad as it could be. So these are the pans. These typically rust out quickly in Volkswagens. And I do believe that this one has had the pans replaced at some point in the past. This is pretty bad. Now these are the heater channels. These carry the hot air um, from the engine to the cabin. These are pretty rusted out there. You can clearly see that. But uh, overall, it's not too bad. Very, very oily. Right here around the drain pan, you can see lots of residue. Um, valve cover gasket definitely looking pretty oily on that side. Being pretty dry on that side, so I did one of those correctly at least when I replaced them. Um, but basically what we're gonna do now is start undoing some of the bolts that hold the engine in place. All right, so what are you doing, Tommy? We're trying to get the lower engine bolts undone, and there's two. So this is the transmission right here, and there's one right up in there, and there's another one right up in there. So we're gonna get those undone, and then we'll lower the car down, and we'll do the top two. You're probably wondering at this point, or you're definitely not, are these guys professionals? Absolutely not. I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. I can't even tell the difference between a bolt and a nut. However, I really want to learn. So that's why we're doing this. And I'm hoping you guys can come with me on this adventure. This is just a start. Yeah, nice. You can see it. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Okay, so that's the second one, and those are gonna come unthreaded completely. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now that we have the two lower bolts undone is we're going to lower the car down and support the weight of the engine on this cart, which my dad and James purchased, and then um, these two by fours. Two by fours? Two by sixes. Two by sixes. Yep. Well, this, this one you don't need. Yeah, we do need it. 
We need the top one too here, right? We need the, well, yeah, we need the top one so that it gets on the oil. Yeah, so um, this has got to kind of sit on the oil pan. Yeah. And then we're going to lower the car down on this, undo the top ones, and then we're going to kind of shake the engine and try to lower the car up, leaving the engine behind. You can definitely tell we're, uh, we're figuring this out as we go. <laughs> all Bring right. her on down, James. Pulling the catches in, dropping this down. All right, so making sure all four corners are moving. Yep. And they are, all right. Might ask you to stop here in a sec. Okay. Because the tricky thing is, is these need to fit between the frame rails of the lift, right? They do. Yeah, I cut them to length. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also, too, you want to make sure that crossbar that's right above your head. Yep. Make sure that doesn't come down on the cart as well. Yep. All right, dropping. Yep. Keep going. Beautiful. Fits like a dream. Keep going. All right. I can't see anymore yep. if you want to count me Got down. Got four inches, three inches. Stop for a sec. Okay, down. Two inches, stop for a sec there. I'm actually gonna reposition the wood just a little bit because the cart's starting to kind of get stuck in this hole. Okay. Which we don't want to happen. All right, bring her on down. So you got two more inches. Okay, and you got, you got maybe half an inch. Perfect. Good? Yep. All right. So there you have the fan shroud, right? And in that hole, if you can kind of see it, is gonna be the little bolt that we need to undo. We ended up removing the deck lid just to make access a little bit easier. We got three of the engine bolts out perfectly, but there's a fourth one which appears to come in from the front of the transmission. And what I'm doing is I'm installing one of the bolts back onto the engine mount, just so we lift the car up to take that one out. It doesn't fall on our heads. Is that a good description, James? That's a good description. Okay, that puppy's on there now. Here, let me hop off. All right. All right, send her up. Going back up. Okay, so here's what we're thinking. Up in here, kind of where that linkage meets. Yeah, over there, there's another little bolt. See it there, the little guy? And we're gonna stick a 17 on that and start twisting. It looks like a James. If, if it were only that easy. <laughs> it's not quite that light. <laughs> I, I just, I wanna be the guy in the cowboy hat. Can I be the guy in the yeah, cowboy hat? Yeah, All right. Be, I'll be the fact that I would. All right. This bolt, and it actually was a bolt and not a nut, proved to be pretty tricky to undo, but luckily James has the patience of a ninja and the strength of a, of a ninja, and he got it undone. You can do the rest. All right, James is the hard part. I come in for the fun bit. Oh yeah. Look at that. You see on a reality TV show, I would pretend like I did all the work, but James is the tricky part. <laughs> That's the difference here. <laughs> there were a couple other pipes to disconnect underneath the car, but with three of the four main fasteners undone, it was time to lower the car down, undo the final one, and pull the engine out. If only it was that easy. One on eight inches. Stop there for just a sec, Jane. I'm gonna reposition the cart. Let's some room. Okay, bring her on down, James. Okay, you got four inches. Oh, now you got four inches. Three inches. Nice. About an inch and a half. About an inch, about half an inch, and stop. So my buddy Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage, she said back in the day she had this down to 27 minutes to get one engine. So now, James, if we do this right, the only thing holding this engine is our hopes and dreams and a lot of grime. jiggling it, it should come back a little bit. Yeah. And then once it's once it's loose. We may need to may need to raise this up a little bit so you can so you can drop Yeah it you wanna do that? Down. I yeah. think we're pretty close James. Alright, I'm gonna come up about an inch. Okay. Alright, ready. Coming yep. up. Yep. Oh. Now this is where my lack of experience really was a problem because even though the engine was undone and was off of the two upper studs, it was still holding on to the lower two and I couldn't scoot it back any further because it was getting caught up on the distributor and I didn't realize this. So I had James just keep raising the car up and the engine kept sagging further and further and further and it was kind of a disaster. So James had to go in there, realize the distributor was the issue. We took the distributor out and then he was the one that finally jiggled it enough to get it undone. Nice thing about the Volkswagen is the two pea shooter exhausts make really, really great little grab handles. Up you go. I'm just gonna tap it. A little more. Yeah, they're completely separate. You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 
Yeah, you're clear. Yeah, keep going. Oh, is that the, this guy? This guy right here? Nope. Uh -oh. It's actually a fuel line okay. we're getting stuck on. Um, uh, do you have a flathead? This somewhere? is your, yeah. Yeah, flathead's right here. Thanks. And then. And then can we grab one of those little uh, clampy guys? Clampy? To, yeah, to prevent fuel from going everywhere. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the orange thing. Okay. So we've got a fuel line here, Dad, which they all told us to disconnect, but I chose to ignore. <laughs> There we go. That's disconnected now. So that fuel line came out all together there. Okay. Okay. We're good on my end. How about you, James? Uh, yeah, good. All right, going up. Yep. We're out. Yahoo! Right. Oh, what a day. Look at that. It's bigger than it looks when it gets on the table, huh? <laughs> Check that out. So we did end up pinching um, a spark plier wire there, but that's not such a problem. I think that came out pretty well. Let's see what's under here. Now this is the little reverse light grommet. You can see it's just holding on this bit of tinware. And there you can see the input shaft of the transmission. Looks in, looking pretty clean overall, I have to say. There's our starter. You can see how the starter would made up to the flywheel there. We got our fuel line all pinched off. I don't know what these go to. These don't hook up to anything. Maybe that's part of the uh, aftermarket alarm system that was in there. Sweet, dude. Thank you for your help. No problem. I appreciate that yeah, so much. It worked out. Well, I really couldn't have done it without James. This was definitely a bucket list. So thank you, buddy, for help. Yeah, no, glad to do it. So what do you think? Was this harder or easier than you were expecting? Uh, there were a lot more wires than I was expecting, which is funny because um, it's not a lot of wires. But... Uh, yeah, no, that the balancing act and, and you know when you watch the other videos of folks doing it, it's a lot of using jacks to move this around and stuff and, and uh, yeah, having the lift was definitely more of a help but than with, being on the ground. With this engine out, I can show you kind of that if you want to come over here, we could talk about the primary reason that I took this engine out and the reason that it wasn't really running very well is do you see this like little metal lip here? See that little rubber seal? So this seal is crucial for keeping the hot side and the cold side of the engine separate. And without that seal, the engine will just overheat constantly. But you can't replace that seal, really, without taking the engine out. One thing I am noticing, though, is you see how this is all twisted? I'm wondering if that was probably rear end accident. Did you see that? A bit of, like, metal, kind of a little bit warped around there. I don't know. So I'm wondering if maybe had a, a rear end chunt at some point. But um, it's off. It's, uh, it's really exciting. I'm super stoked. So now we've got to figure out what we're going to do with the old engine. Are we going to have it rebuilt? Are we going to try to rebuild it ourselves? And then um, are we going to get a new one? And then the bodywork, of course.